add better black bars in Final Cut Pro with this one simple method. I'll show how to add black bars in one click and the real reason your black bars look bad on phones and TVs. And if you want to animate your bars, watch till the end and I'll share two tricks that will take your video from amateur to cinematic. Ready? Let's raise the bar. In Final Cut Pro, open up the effects browser by clicking on this button here or pressing Command-5. Go down to the Stylize category and then look for Letterbox. Here it is. I'll drag and drop that onto my effect to add Letterbox. And you can see right here, we've got a little bit of black bars on the top and the bottom. Let's adjust that. I'll select my clip with the effect and then open up the inspector. Over here on the right-hand side, if you don't see it open, just click on this button right here with the three sliders or press Command-4 to open the inspector. And then on the Video Inspector tab, you'll see Effects and underneath there is Letterbox. I can adjust my aspect ratio. 1.66 is the standard they use in Europe for widescreen presentations. 1.85 is the theatrical standard for widescreen presentations. And then 2.35 is the standard widescreen presentation for theatrical films. And then 3 is ultra widescreen format. Let's try out this 2.35 one. We can see we've got black bars now on the top and bottom. And that looks a little bit more like what we're used to seeing in the movies here in the United States. I can use offset to change my composition. To the left brings the video down and to the right brings the video up. What's cool about this is I can also keyframe it if I need to with the keyframe functions here. I can also change the border size. I can make it a little bit bigger if I want. It maxes out here at 10 and at zero. If I add more border to it like so, I can then adjust the color right here. I'll click on this and let's make it purple. But you'll see it's just this little strip here and here. If I change border size, you'll see that it doesn't change the black bars that were added. It's only changing the border that we've added to the black bars. To turn the border off, just set it to zero. So I've got this sequence here of this kind of spy thriller guy running through the woods. Actually, I think he's just going home to get some freshly baked chocolate chip cookies without raisins. I've got my letterbox on this first one, but I want to apply it to these other ones. So how do I do that? I'll select my first clip and I'll press Command C to copy. And then I can select my other two clips and then I can go up here to edit. And then I can go here and select paste attributes or I can use the keyboard shortcut Shift Command V, pull it up. And it asks what effects or transform changes do I want to apply? And so I can make sure letterbox is checked and I'll click paste. And sure enough, now all three clips have the letterbox effect. I can also make an effects preset. I'll select my clip that has the letterbox on it. And then at the bottom of the inspector, I'll click on Save Effects Preset and I'll give it a name. We'll call it Dylan's Letterbox. And I'll select the category where I want it to save right there. And then I'll include whatever attributes or changes I made to the first clip. And it's just letterbox. So I'll click Save. And now if I go to this category here under Stupid Raisins, I'll see my Dylan's Letterbox effect. And now I can drag and drop that onto my clip and it adds the letterbox. Or I can select my clip and then double click on Dylan's Letterbox and it adds a letterbox to that clip as well. Another way to add it to several at once is to select your clips and then press Alt or Option G to bring up the compound clip and give it a name and then press Enter or click OK. And now it's one big clip. And if I go to Stylize and then find my letterbox, I'll drag and drop it onto my compound clip and then I'll set my aspect ratio to 2.35. And now all of my clips have this letterbox on it because it's applied it to the compound clip, which is all three of them together. You gotta be careful when you're adding black bars or letterbox effects to your videos because when you publish them and they're viewed on TVs or phones, they can come out looking really bad. Check this out. My buddy Dylan John here made a video showing how you're doing cinematic black bars wrong. Basically what can happen is you're taking away space and then it adds this extra black space all the way around the video and makes your video look bad. Dylan goes into a lot more detail in his video and I'll link to it below in the description. It's really helpful so be sure to check it out. So to get around that you need to customize your project. So I'm going to create a new project. I'll press command N and we'll call this bars and I'm going to set my video to custom and for 1080p you want to set it to 1920 by 822 or 4k you want to set to 3840 by 1644 and then press OK. Now I'm going to add this clip to my project and we can see that the clip has been squeezed in to fit this project. So in the inspector, I'm going to change spatial conform to none. And now it fills that entire video. If I right click up here and select transform, I can move my clip up and down to recompose the shot. Then I'll click done. And now when I export it with these dimensions or this resolution, and it's played on a widescreen TV or phone, it'll have the black bars on top and bottom, but it won't put those black bars on the sides. It'll look perfect. So be careful when you're using the letterbox effect. Hey there, are you excited to add bars to your videos in Final Cut Pro? 
Has what I've shared been helpful? If so, will you give it a thumbs up so other people will see this video? Thanks, and in just a second, I'm gonna show you how to animate your bars, but first I wanna show you another technique that has more options. Another way to add black bars on top and bottom is to use the shape mask, and this gives you a lot more options. So under effects, go to shapes, and then drag and drop shape mask onto your clip. In the inspector, set curvature to zero, and let's set feather to zero as well. Now we've got a nice solid rectangle, but we need to make it a little bit bigger. Let's increase our sides there. We'll go to 1920, and that'll match the size of my video, 1920 pixels wide. And then we can also make it a little taller and to get the black bars just right. So this is cool because now we can set our black bars exactly how we want. And here's how that looks. You can also control that on screen. If I click and drag on one of these green circles, it makes it taller or shorter. And then the same on the side here. Let's do a cool animation and reveal this surfer. I'll go to the point in the video where I want the animation to begin. And then in the inspector, I'm gonna set a keyframe right next to this radius Y value. And then I'm gonna move forward a little bit in time and I'll set another keyframe. Now click this previous keyframe button and set it to zero and play it back. It animates and opens up and shows our surfer, but I think it goes too fast, so let's adjust it. I'll select my clip and press Control V to open up the animation editor. And we can see the keyframes right down here, these little white dots. If I move the keyframes closer together, the animation happens faster. If I spread them out, it happens more slowly. Let's take a look at it now. There we go, that looks pretty good. One thing to keep in mind when using the shape mask is anything below the video clip will show up here at these black bars. So, for example, if I drag this clip over here, we can see the guy running below it, which is kind of cool because now we can add a custom color under there. Go up here and click on the title and generator browser button and down under generators, go to solids and add this custom color solid underneath your video clip. Right now it's set to black. If we select the generator and go to the generator inspector, we can change the color right here. We can change it to whatever we want. This is a cool way to add a custom color if you don't wanna do black bars. Now let's animate some black bars coming into the screen. So I'll move my playhead to where I want the animation to start. And then in the inspector, I'll go to this crop section here and I'll set a keyframe for top and bottom with the value at zero. I'll move forward in time. And now I'll bring my top down and my bottom up. And I'm gonna double click on these numbers and enter a value to get it just right. Let's try 325, see how that looks. All right, and let's play it back. That looks pretty good. If I want to adjust the timing, I'll select my clip, press Control V, and then I can select these keyframes and move them to adjust the timing. Now, as long as there's no video clip beneath this one, when I export it, it will export as black bars here and here. All right, now your video is looking a little more cinematic with those bars on the top and bottom. To really nail that cinematic look, you need to adjust how your video looks. I put together a video and I outlined five simple steps to get that cinematic look. Click here to check it out.